Uh, well then. Buzz? <laughs> Some assistance. Uh, I think that he, he just like, uh, put a hand out like, uh, wait, hold on here. Uh, it's not an elemental. <laughs> I can see that now. <laughs> She's still holding her hand out. Um, she looks like, roll me a perception check, <clears throat> both of you. 20. Um, Tover, you won't roll this because you're not looking at her face. You're looking from. You're looking at. You can see her from behind. You only see the cloak, so you can see the blue cloak from behind. Uh, you don't see the black hair. Okay. That twenties for both. Yeah, twenties for both of you. Yeah, when you both are looking at her, um, she looks as though she is looking past both of you towards the inn. Um, she does not look like she's. She cares about the fact that you're standing in front of her whatsoever. And um, something that you notice right away, uh, Uthal, is that she does have on her cloak, the clasp on her cloak is the same clasp you have on your cloak, your new cloak that you have. Okay. Um, probably gonna sheath his greatsword then. If it has a sheath, I don't even know if I have a sheath for it. Sure, you can have a sheath. And so, Harley's like, she wants the ale. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's going to uh, maybe like a point at the uh, clasp. And then he's going to point at his own without even saying anything. Okay. You're not going to say anything. You just point at your own clasp. Yeah, you, you point at yours. You're just, you put your weapon away and you just point like this. That's what you do? <laughs> okay. You're just standing there pointing and she's still looking straight beyond you um, towards the inn. And um, Baz, it is going to be your turn with initiative. Uh, he takes a few steps forward, um, not in like a particularly threatening posture. Uh, okay. And... He says, uh, I apologize for his rash actions. Does she respond at all or is she still just looking? She looks past you, lowers her hand, um, and it almost sounds like she's speaking to you um, in your head. Uh, if you are willing to take the message. Yes. I do not care whether you are here to attack me or not. Uh-huh. Uh, Buzz looks to Uthal. Does Uthal look like he's responding to anything, or is he still just going? <laughs> Uthal, what are you doing? At that, the moment, seeing his, he got no reaction. He might just be waving his hand in front of her face. His giant hand. Yeah. So that's what you see. Uh, what do you want here? He knows I want what he has, and I will come to get it. And she steps forward. Tover, it is your turn. Unless you guys want to attack her. Or, well, I guess... The only person who could attack her is Uthal, because you went up to her, right? Yeah. Um, but, Uthal, you have an opportunity to attack if you want. Um, if you want. He's you did put your weapon away, so it would... Uh, it, be <laughs> it would be like a melee. Punch. Yeah, it'd be yeah. a punch. He's gonna let her walk. Okay. Partly because he put all of his effort into that sword swing and she just blocked it like it was nothing <laughs> yeah so um you have probably seen something of that sort before that type of magic um shield magic before because you're it, you're you're partially sorcerer right yeah he actually yeah. has the shield spell but his doesn't block as best as good as that one yeah so makes sense Hers must be higher level is what you're thinking in your head. Okay, totally. 
Um, yeah, you just let her walk past you and she continues walking. Tover, it is your turn. What would you like to do? You just saw this whole exchange. Um, you didn't yeah. see the clasp, but you did see this. And you, now that you're, you know, standing there clear, like you can see a little bit more clearly, um, cause there's no weird sandstorm happening. You do see a young woman that has a cloak on. Um, uh, you saw a g giant Goliath. How tall are you? Actually describe what your character looks like for Tover. So, uh, Uthal is a seven foot 11 Goliath weighing about 327 pounds. Um, <clears throat> he stands taller than pretty much everyone in the town. And, uh, he's kind of a hulking figure, but also slender at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's got a, um, he's got a stone gray face, if you can see it under his hood. Uh, actually right now he's not wearing his hood, because he wasn't ready to cast. So, um, <clears throat> but he's got this, uh. This cloak on with this clasp in the middle that he just pointed at. I actually don't know how to describe the clasp right now. Um, remember? like what the clasp looks like exactly? Yeah. Um, it is a silver clasp with an emblem on it, but you're not sure what the emblem means. Okay. Silver clasp and, uh, just some sort of normal common clothes underneath. Right. Um, yeah, because you can't see the veins anymore because of a different <laughs> wild magic. Oh, and he's also got a uh, a sundial on his head. Okay, that's unusual. Yeah. I forgot about that because, well, some, yeah. But the important thing is that no one's attacking each other, which means it's safe to keep walking. So I walk up to them. If I can make it in one turn, I don't know how far I am. You want to walk up to them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can easily walk up to them. So. I'll, yeah, you can walk up to them. I'm going to say you guys are out of combat unless you are going to initiate combat with this woman. You're going to just let her walk past you? All right. She's yeah. going to walk into the inn. The three of you are standing there as Tover walks up to the two of you standing there. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Tova Elven Mage. I'm new to town, been the victim of some random magical mishaps. I think I'm okay now, developed an immunity. That's how it goes. And I find myself in need of some expert tailoring. Any shops in town, maybe? Um. Uh, Uthal's probably just gonna stand there, uh, kind of blank faced. I know, I'm really handsome, and I'm basically <laughs> naked, but I need you to focus. I need some clothes. <laughs> no, how about you? As you say this, Paladin, uh, roll me a 1d 10,000. Thank you, E-Man. <laughs> no. <laughs> and thank you, Doozer Pan, uh, Doozer Pan Dan. Um, that uh, lady was for you. <laughs> I'm within the blast radius. Aurora, your thing is coming up soon, so stay tuned. Okay. Let's see what I'm this worried. is. I'm worried. I mean, I was worried already, but now I'm even more worried. <laughs> I couldn't stop her. I mean, I could have. I think but I have I an idea what this is going to be. <gasps> oh, goodness. Um, uh -oh. I have to ask you some questions, uh -oh. um, Tover. So we're going we're gonna to take a flashback of Tover. Do you have family, Tover? I do. I'm noble. Comes with the territory. Are you close to anybody with your, in your family? Of course. As tight as we can be. Um, who is in your family? Can you tell me a little bit about them? Well, it's a large family. That would take all day. Parents, mm. siblings, cousins. You name it. We've got it all. Who's your favorite? I'd have to say my sister. She writes poetry, and that's always been beyond me. So, quite impressed by her talents. Uh, she writes poetry. Um, what, what about her do you remember the most, beyond the poetry? Um, 
I'd have to say her voice as she read the poetry to me then. Mm. Very, very commanding. Powerful. Okay. Almost like a bard, would you say? She was a bard. How did you know? So mm. smart. Uh, what did she look like? Well, we all basically, we look similar. You know, long blonde hair, dazzlingly handsome. Runs in the family. Only she's a girl, of course, so there's some differences there. Also, yeah. she has, she looks a little meaner than I do. Oh, meaner. Interesting. Just a little. She's, you know, strong. Forceful. Okay. Um, what's your favorite memory with your sister? Perhaps as children when we would, you know, uh, throw mud at the wood elves so she made feel more at home in the city. <laughs> That's horrible. Is it? I thought we were being kind. Well, shows what I know about wood elves. Oh, I love it. Um, meant to be a jerk. Oh yeah, I get it. You, you, I want, I want your character and Cathanis's character to meet each other. Cause, oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. So, um, has there ever been a situation where you and your sister um, got into trouble, or had had something bad happen to you both? Well, we've obviously been punished a great deal by our parents. Nothing too serious, but. Um, yeah, um, well, she, she, I don't think we've ever gotten into trouble together as much, independently, mm. of course, but not like as a team, because okay. that's, that's child stuff. So you got into trouble on your own. Did Was there any time where you maybe bailed her out or she bailed you out? Of course, like, we, you know, if you got too drunk. I have to come and pick her up from jail, vice versa, drunk tanks. It's all very respectable. I think I fished her out of the, the ditch once when she fell asleep. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm going to keep this wild magic to myself, uh, but you will learn about it soon. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, never. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, as you're having this conversation uh, with one another, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw you back into the conversation that you guys were originally having. Sorry about that. Um, you were saying to um, Uthal about, that you're new in the town. Go ahead. Because Uthal was just standing there. Uh, so I asked Baz, do you maybe know where I can find a tailor? He's been here for a while, so I imagine he does. And uh, I think he just points Here's in the, the thing. Direction. Hmm? Are you is are you looking for a cloth tailor or an uh, a leather tailor? Cloth. Okay. Because the other one would be a, like a leather. Like a leather worker. Okay. Um. You look around. I mean, everyone can kind of look around and see that there aren't a lot of shops. Uh, most people have fled. Uh, Uthal and Baz would would definitely know this. Um. There is a person you know that does cloth work, um, but it's not like a shop. So you can't like forward them to a shop, but you can maybe forward them to the person, like give them their contact information type of thing. Mm. Uh, on that case, um, I think Boz just says, maybe later, important things, and points back towards the, uh, the woman walking towards the tavern and follows yeah. after more important than this i'm naked man come on that's not decent uh, who thought probably assume. at that outburst will just take out his old hooded cloak and throw it at him <laughs> does your cloak have any magical uh, effects or is it just a cloak no, just a cloak what does it look like um it's a very dark gray uh it kind of just matches his skin um and it's very big <laughs> Yeah, he's seven seven foot plus tall. Uh, the woman that was there, standing there before, is about like five four, five six, roughly. I mean, unless you were like eyeing her up. Well, I guess actually the two of you were eyeing her up. She's she's about five six, 
in height. The two of you would know that because you did eye her up. Um, she's quite pretty. Um, right, well, I accept the, the giant cloak. Take a look at it. What What's the quality? I'm assuming all horrible. Um, well, yeah, it's actually pretty poor. Uh, it has no holes in it because Uthal doesn't like holes in his stuff, but it's of poor quality. He been he had been wearing it for uh, seven years before he got his new cloak. Hmm. Well, at least it's still serviceable. I cast minor illusion on it to change what it looks like, and then I wrap it around myself and somehow manage to make it look good. A minor illusion. That is a concentration spell, right? I have no idea. I don't think it is. You could throw it into the thing. Yeah, you can just cast it into the chat. Duration one minute. Okay, so it, it yeah, it lasts. It's not concentration, but it lasts one minute. Okay. Yeah, you you cast a spell on it, and what does it look like now? It's my normal blue color, hmm. which is sort of a teal kind of thing. Is it like made out of like? Does it look more velvety or something? Mm -hmm. No, it looks much much better now. Intricate like designs on it. This is a thing I know about. Yeah, so you see him uh, toss this cloak on him, cast or cast a spell on it. It looks much finer than what you had handed him, and he puts it on and and, and uh, puts it over his body. As you see, Baz just like walk grunts and walks away from you, and uh, the woman has already walked through the door, um, because you guys were having this conversation while she was uh, already on her way. Um, and as uh, you guys are standing there, I'm going to ask you a question. Out of character, uh, normally we do end around 10 p.m. Would you guys like to go for another hour, or would you like me to wrap things up? I can <laughs> go for another sense. hour. I'm good. Sure. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to pan into the inside, if y'all are all right with that, unless you had some more RP that you'd like to do with all and Tover. I'd just like to thank him, shake his hand for the cloak. That's really nice. Okay. Uthal will grasp your baby hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a manly hand. That's good. Oh, That's cute. like covered in like an exoskeleton. Almost. I think we rolled for hotness and Uthal was actually fairly attractive, right? Yes. Yeah. Although Ardoth was hotter. Yeah. Ardoth's an old man too. <laughs> Which I love it. He's like hot Santa. Um, <laughs> I always think of hot Santa because like there was this time where like all the moms and grandmas in my family and like a bunch of my friends family were like posting about him. I don't know if you guys have heard of that before. Look up hot Santa. Or maybe don't, because that might bring up some weird stuff for you. <laughs> oh, God. Um, we're gonna go inside. Uh, Varys, as you're sitting there with uh, this woman and you're having this small talk and trying to console her, kind of like keep her spirits up because she looks very sad uh, and you're waiting for your friend to arrive. Um, specifically, you're waiting for Boz because you had a conversation with him and he's taking more time, but maybe perhaps he's testing his uh, axe out and taking his time with that. Uh, a woman walks in. Um, I don't think, because you weren't here for the episode when uh, the woman, okay. Yeah, so, so you don't recognize her. Uh, she goes and sits down. Um, Roll me a perception check. Oh no, it's a natural 20. Yeah, uh, you feel like someone's watching you. And um, as you look around, you notice that this woman in this blue cloak is continually looking at you. And every time you look over, she looks like she's not. And every time you look away, you can feel this, this like, you know when you can feel like someone's looking at you? That's the feeling that you feel like. You feel like this tension between you and the, and the person across. She's not even sitting near you. She's sitting like off closer to the front of um, the inn. And she's drinking some like what looks like maybe a glass of wine. Is it the same feeling that I get? Uh, or at least that I got when like the, the dragon started appearing? Like I could feel that the dragon was after me for some reason. Hmm. Or is it like a different sensation? Um, you're not sure. You're not sure exactly. You definitely feel like this person is in particularly interested in you. This person's particularly interested in you as she's looking at you. Oh. 
Hello, Calamity. Oh, thank you for the host, Scraticus. Welcome to all the Scrats. Scrat Raid! Thank you so much, Scraticus. Uh, if you guys can, give Scraticus a follow. Um, I play over on Scrat's channel every Monday where we play Mouse Guard. It is super duper duper fun. Um, so, uh, and of course, Scrat has like a ton of content if you're looking for more tabletop RPG content. Good peoples over there. All right, go ahead. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna cast Primeval Awareness. And I'm not currently in my favorite terrain because I'm in the middle of an inn. So that's only gonna have an effect of one mile. I'll cast it with a first level spell slot. So I've got like one minute. I'll have like awareness within a mile. Okay. And you're trying to specifically look for... Uh, dragons, things like that. Okay. Basically, like, I can put in the chat, like, what it yeah, will tell me. Yeah, toss it is... in chat so people can see it. There we go. Yeah, and you're looking It'll for... It'll tell me about celestials, ab ab aberrations, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Oh, yeah. You cast this, and you're casting it at what level? First level. First level. Um... Yeah, you you feel lots of things near you. Um, you feel aberrations, um, dragons, elementals, fiends, fey, undead, um, all within one mile of you. Yeah, because where you are currently. It's yeah, definitely. Jesus Christ, that's like the entire list. I'm like, hey, maybe check one of these. No, check everything. Good. It doesn't Lord. tell you exactly where they are, but yeah, you feel no. the, you feel this. Actually, you tell me. What is it? What is it like when you when you're using your primeval awareness? I'd, I'd probably close my eyes for a bit, and like concentrate on my wood elf connection with nature to like feel, almost like feel through the earth, kind of like tap into the roots and like get pulses of things, but not like their location, but like tap into it and like feel the auras of people. Yeah. Or in this case, creatures. And you're and you're grasping for that aura, and you feel you feel all of it. It's it gives you like shivers down the back of your spine. Yeah, this is almost like sensory overload level. Like, just was... like you feel suddenly very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think horrified is going to be the more appropriate response here. Yeah, you feel horrified as you, as you feel this. Um, and for those of you who are just joining us, we are playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition for the kids over at St. Jude. If you look to the right of me, you can see if you do exclamation point St. Jude, you can see how you can donate to affect the game. There are all kinds of goodies to the right of here. Of course, uh, when you do so, please let me know which of my lovely cast members, or if it's for me, um, what the item is that you are providing them with and... Um, or what the item, uh, what, yeah, what the specific thing is that you are trying to provide and who it's for. Um, of course, uh, we are raising money and it, so far we are at $8,924,000.50. Our next goal is 9,000. We are so close to it. If we hit 9,000, we are gonna be doing a Steam giveaway and also Man Beast is gonna do the milk challenge on top of the habanero challenge. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, what a diverse town this is. Nice, Dan. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, you get this feeling that there's lots of evil um, surrounding you. Um, but Paris and this woman is looking at you consistently. In between her sips and when you look over, she doesn't look like she's looking at you. Uh, she's very... She's being very, very extremely sly about it. And if you weren't as perceptive as you are currently... Um, you would not even notice. Okay. So um, I offer to the lady uh, sitting across from me after like trying to hide my horror and like I imagine I do it pretty well. But mm -hmm. I offer to like go get another round of ale. And I walk over to the bar mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask them if they can give her an ale for me. Like have one of the barmaids bring her over an ale. Um, yeah, so a barmaid walks up to you and she's like, what can I do you for? Well, 
I would I would like to get another uh, another round of ale for me and the lady over there. And also, I happen to notice that um, the lady sitting in another corner, and I like make like I I like gestures like don't no no don't look it, it's gonna get over. Yeah, she she looks over and then she d- tries to not look as you say don't look and she looks back at you. And she has a grin on her face. A, she might have a bit of an eye on me. Could you do me a favor and bring her a nail as well, please? Oh, do you got a little crush? <laughs> I think she might have one, so who knows? I love when Eleva's is near. Love. I'll do what I'll do that for you. No problem. I'll be right over. And uh, she looks like she's grabbing uh, three glasses and she starts filling them up with ale. Um, drops the one off at the table for the woman and um, you can see them having an interaction. I'm gonna not going to make you roll again, but you already did a uh, nat 20 on that. Uh, and you can see them kind of motioning. She's motioning. She's pointing over your direction. Um, do you wave as they look? They both look towards your direction. I pretend not to notice. Okay, you pretend not to notice. Um, I am going to roll an insight check then. I believe is wisdom, right? Yes, it should be. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you are going to be rolling, because you have to dece- do something deceptive, which... If you even if you do, it's gonna be a nat twenty. But uh, take your take your nat twenty. Um, I will remove that. So that would be a deception, which is good because you have a negative one to your deception. So yeah, he's he's not a people person normally, but give him nat twenties, and suddenly like love is in the air. Yeah, as the so would say she doesn't she she doesn't see that you're like trying to hide it. It seems like you're you you genuinely don't look like you're looking over her direction, um, and. Uh, when they finish their conversation, she has the tray and she comes back over and she slides it over and she, the barmaid gives you a, a wink and she's like, let me know if I can help you with anything else. And then she walks back over to the bar. Sweet. I casually continue drinking my drink and keeping an eye on the lady in the cloak. Okay. Uh, the lady in the cloak does not touch the drink that you gave her. I will let you know that. She continues drinking Ooh. the wine that she has. In this time... This is enough time for Baz to get into the um, into the inn. Baz, you come into the inn, and the woman that you had been following is sitting at the table, kind of like just as you enter the inn. It looks like she, you know, didn't try to like scurry her way away. She's sitting there. She looks as though she has a mug of ale and a bottle, or like a glass of wine, and she's sipping the glass of wine. You see Varys um, off in the back corner with another woman. And um, there are a few other people in the inn as well. And that's kind of what you see as you come in. Uh, Boz looks relieved to see that nothing has exploded yet or anything to that effect. Uh, hmm. Uh, does Varys do anything when he sees Boz come in? I probably turn to the lady and he's like, Ah, there you... Uh, oh, looks like he's brought... Uh another one as well so that's two immediately and i just like hello boss over here he you nods. were lying you, you do know them and she like looks over towards you uh boss this woman that's sitting next to um to varus is looking at you with like gleeful eyes um and varus is the first time that you've looked at her and she looks happy uh yeah, Boz uh, walks over. He kind of, he kind of looks at the lady in the cloak for a second and keeps walking by. Yeah, you look at the lady um, in the cloak. Are you trying to like perceive anything, or are you just looking passively? No, I think he's just like looking. What's your passive perception again? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Um, with the fourteen, she does not look like she looks at you as you walk by, whatsoever. All right. Yeah, he he steps over to uh, to Varys, nods at him. Varys, please have a seat. Um, might I introduce you to uh, Lady? I'm I'm sure she told me her name in like our casual conversation <laughs> at some point. Might I introduce you to Lady? 
What's her name? <laughs> um, yeah, we can say that you were you were having uh, quite a bit of conversation with her, and I'm gonna see if there's a name in here that we haven't used yet from um, our name list. And I don't believe there is. So, um, her name is Sarah. All right. Might I introduce you to Sarah? She's been, uh, she's been, uh, showing interest in you and your friend on the mural over there. And she wanted to speak to you about something. He kind of tilts his head a little and, uh, goes, oh. I figured since we're going to meet up here anyway, and she seemed in a bit of distress. Looks like you might be able to help her with something. Oh, it's, it's, it's so wonderful to meet you. She kind of, like, puts her hand out to, like, um... Shake your hand. He shakes it, yeah. Uh, she puts both of her hands on yours. Um, her handshake is very delicate. Like, it's, you know, when you t when you shake someone's hand and it's, like, very light. And she's oh, kind of yeah. just, like, holding your hand and it's a very light touch to uh, touch the feel. Um, she seems kind of weak when you when you hold her, when you touch her hand. Mm -hmm. But she's she looks, like, very grateful and she's almost, like, bowing as she's holding your hand. Uh, I, I'm, I'm Sarah. I'm Boz. Oh, sorry, guys. I didn't see the Sandy name in chat, but uh, thank you. <laughs> Her name will be Sarah Sandy. How about that? Sarah Sandy. Could be Sandy. <laughs> I thought the lady in the cloak was going to be Sandy, but I mean, she might be. You well, haven't she talked was to her at yet. Some point. Spoilers in chat, but uh, you don't actually know who she is. <laughs> Um, oh. yeah, uh, she, she's like, she shakes your hand and that's kind of what you, you're in this awkward thing where she's like still holding your hand and like bowing towards you. Uh, <laughs> Boz doesn't entirely know what to do. He's not used to getting like a whole lot of respect mm -hmm. and, uh, at least not like this, but, uh, after a few seconds, he's like, um, you... You needed something? Uh, yes. She's still holding your hand. She, like, hasn't let go of you. It's almost like she's holding on to you, and it, it ha you have this feeling... <laughs> awkward hand-holding. Hey, Arvon. Everyone's coming to visit me. Hey, Arvon. Thank you so much for, for joining in. If you guys haven't followed Arvon, Arvon Aleron, give him a follow over there. I'm on their channel on Saturdays sometimes. I don't know when the next Saturday will be, um, but I play this amazing uh, Vistani gypsy person and she's so much fun to play. Um, yeah, she's she's still awkwardly holding your hand and yeah, I, I need help. And she looks at the mural and then looks back at you. And I think only your friends will be able to help us. What do you need? You should probably sit. Uh, and th th this is where she lets go of your hand. I'll yeah, gesture he... for the barmaid to get them a drink. Yeah, barmaid winks at you, uh, goes and gets another drink, puts it on your tab, uh, comes back over, slides it on the table, um, tries not to uh, interrupt your guys' conversations. And Boz sits next to her, I guess. Yeah, you, you sit next to her, and um, she's kind of just, like, still looking at you in awe that you're, like, it's almost like she doesn't believe you're real. And then she keeps looking at the mural and then looking back at you. Like, just to, like, it's almost like she's looking at your features and then looking at the painting and trying to see if it's, like, really you or if you're just, like, an imposter. Um, you get that feeling, even with a 14 perception. Like, she's not being coy about it. She's just, she looks like she's... Not, she wants to make sure whoever she's telling this to is the right person, it seems. Mm. And uh, she anxiously like touches the side, the end of the table, um, and kind of taps her fingers along along the the table. She doesn't have nails, so it's not like a sound of fingers touching the table or uh, nails touching the table. It's just like fingertips. You can just see her fingertips touching the table. And and uh, when you look at her even further, um, it looks like maybe she's bit her fingernails a lot they're they're chewed and it looks like they're very short so maybe she's been very anxious mm. 
uh, Boz waits a couple seconds for her to say something, and when she doesn't, um, I guess says, I'm sitting now. What troubles you? Right, right. Um, and then she kind of looks at Varys and then looks at you and is like, you both know each other. We've met on uh, several occasions now. This is one of the few times that uh, it's one of the more pleasant occasions, let's put it that way. She looks at Baz and she's like, do you trust him? And looks at Varys as if she hasn't been sitting there talking to you this whole time. I trust him well enough. I haven't known him long, but he doesn't seem to have ill intentions. If I tell you this, you can't tell anyone else, or I fear... She looks around, um, and you see her kind of glance behind her at the woman in the cloak, um, and around at everyone else. But the moment she looks at the woman in the cloak, her eyes linger a little bit longer than anyone else. Um, and she looks back at all of you. I th think that after I tell you this, I, I, I might not live very long. Boz looks very concerned at that. Not entirely sure how to react. Yeah, I mean, you, you can just kind of... Be, it can be an awkward situation, totally. I... need help finding my, my child. We tried to go by ourselves. My husband and I... I... There's a cat in the distance, you hear? Yep. <laughs> Riggs, come here! Um... I... He... Didn't make it back. Buzz looks over to the, uh, the board with all the... the posts about the missing kids. Yeah, you look at the message board with all the kids. And as you look at the board with all the... the message board with all the kids, this is when... Uzal and Tover, if you both would like to go into the inn, you're welcome to join the inn now. Sure. So he probably grumbles his way into the inn, um, probably commenting on the still low doorway. <laughs> yeah, you do so. Um, do you hold the door open for Tover? Um, if I notice he's behind me, I will. I'm also okay. on a crutch, so... Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, we lost Rick. We lost Rick. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, the pot showed up and he left. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Um, I'm sure he'll be but back. That big enough for the five of us, four of us, whatever. Anyway, you were saying. We'll continue on. Go ahead, uh, Uthal. So I'm gonna grumble my way into the tavern and uh, see that Boz and. Uh, Varys are sitting together talking to a woman. Yeah. Um, as you do so, uh, it's fine. Um, is your is your internet derping out? No, it's like m people here are slowly waking up, and they were asking last night, like, "Hey, can we reset the router for a moment?" It's like, cool. So we're gonna do that now while you're in the middle of a stream without telling you. Oh, that sucks. I'm it's fine. Sorry. That was a quick re <coughs> reboot. Um. Yeah, Uthal, uh, you, you do see your friends over there. Do you just walk towards them? Yeah, I'm just going to walk towards them. If, uh, if I notice the woman to completely stop my sword blade uh, is sitting, I'm going to like sit so that I can keep an eye on her. Yeah, totally. Um, you can actually sit um, right next to Varys and you get like a direct view. You can look straight at her. Okay. Um, yeah, you you go ahead and sit there. Uh, do you invite your your new newly met acquaintance Tover? He will. Um, I, I'll just follow him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He'll invite him over. Okay. Did you want to RP oh, that or so kind? You know, I, I have lived in town and I haven't had the chance to make many friends, so I'm sure it will be easy. Sure. Whatever you say. 
<laughs> right. I mean, you're yeah, friendly. Man. You live here, probably a great example of the sort of people that live in this town, right? I am the worst example of the people who live in this town. Really, the rest are all jerks. Hmm. Well, As you say this, Tover, yeah. you look around the inn. When you first walked into the door to the left of you, there was a message board. It looks like there's a lot of jobs and, and things on that board. Uh, you see a lot of paintings um, of children, it looks like, that is on this message board. The inn has right uh, to, the, to the right of that is a small stage, and then there are about five to six tables with a variation of, of chairs. It looks like they're kind of newly built tables and chairs as well. Um, to the right of you is a large bar um, where there's people working behind it, glasses hanging from the top. Um, and to the far, far back, you can see what looks like the start of an inn where you could go and there looks like a bunch of rooms back in that direction. Um, you do, as you and Uthal start walking towards um, the table with Varys and Baz and this young woman, as well as um, past the lady with the cloak, uh, you kind of have this somber feeling as you look over at Varys and Baz as they are looking very um, empathetically towards this woman who um, is sitting at the table with them. And you both come in, you're not like, you know, we're in a different vibe. Yeah, you're in a different vibe as you walk in and sit. And as you as you both walk up, she stops saying. She stops speaking. Excuse oh, I'm me. sorry. Did we interrupt? Baz, Varus, this is uh, yes. Tover. Hello, my name is Tover Elven Maze, a wild elf. That's so ah. quaint. I haven't he seen one of you in a few weeks. Pleasure he to meet you. My name is Varys. We need to have Varys. words at some point. You and I? Well, of course. The only elves in the town, I take it? Yeah, there haven't been many of us around. Well, delightful. I'm sure I'll enjoy talking about, I don't know, turnips or whatever. Whatever you in interest you. I love turnips. They're great. Right. Uh, the lady here was just telling us about some uh, pressing matters. Oh, and I look at the lady. Do you? Bo I, I know Uthal said he's going to sit down. Are you sitting down as well, Tover? Well, I am on crutches, and I just walked. So yes. All right. Yeah, yes. you sit down, and actually, for the first time, it feels very nice sitting down. You've never had to work so hard to walk in your life and normally other people carry you so it's not like you walk long distances yourself um so the table is basically we have tover and um uthal and varus and then the young woman and Boz to the left of her so that's kind of what the circle around the table looks like But let my lady you will say something about pressing matters. She again looks up at Baz, um, and actually her eyes go towards Uthal. And then Uthal, you notice that she's looking at you, and then she's looking at the mural and back at you again. Uh, he'll probably, uh, if he, assuming he notices that she's looking at the mural of where he is on there. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, he's she's he's probably gonna say. I was a bit smaller then. <laughs> yeah, she's she's looking at it oddly. Like you have facial, you have features of, of the creature that's there sitting on top of the giant water spout. Um, uh, oh, how do you have an enlarged magic spell? Uh, there was some sort of magic causing me to be small. I've normally been large. Oh. He says. Yes. Kind of looking at you quizzically. Um, and she looks Nor back. Nor the uh, sundial on my head. <laughs> With that comment, she has kind of like a hmm look. Uh, and she looks back at Baz again and then looks at Uthal and looks back at Baz and says, do you trust them? And she looks at Tover and at Uthal. Uthal, I 
trust implicitly. I do not know. Tover? Oh, you can absolutely trust me. I'm a noble high elf. <laughs> With that, <laughs> what happens? So Uthal and all his charismatic features just take a dive. <laughs> 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 Can you explain to the audience what happens? So, um, in the presence of royals or nobles, um, Uthal's charisma is reduced due to a wild magic that happened to him a while back. Um, <laughs> so, as when he s says that he's a noble, um, Uthal's Uthal's uh, how do I explain this? Roll 2d4 for me. Yep. You probably get anxious and uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a... Uh, oh. Oh, oh my wow. god! That's only a minus one. That's not bad. I'm not dead. <laughs> okay. You're only as awkward as I am now. Just have to remember. Damn, that kid son. Now. <laughs> okay. So you're just... You get a little anxious. So what you noticed, Tover, is Uthal seemed very confident earlier in front of you, um, kind of was passively letting you kind of uh, follow him to the table, welcoming you. Now he seems anxious um, and uncomfortable that you, after you've known and said that. Well, I mean, you'd have to probably do an insight check or something like that, but you do notice a change in the way that he's speaking to you. All right. Would you like me to make an inside check? It's up to you. Sure. Yeah, it's more of if you care to want to know presence. why. You, you gather that it's just because in noble presence, people get flustered all the time. I mean... I know I'm a much higher social class yeah. than you, but it's fine, really. I came here to get away from all that. You can relax. All right. Um, Buzz. No, no, really, your low birth doesn't bother me at all. Buzz is kind of grinding his teeth in the direction of Tover. <laughs> yeah, the, the grinding of teeth happens. Um, and the lady looks really uncomfortable. She's kind of like scratching her hands with her hands, biting them a little bit. Uh, every once in a while you see her like kind of looking over her shoulder a little bit, but like not looking fully back. She's just kind of like, uh, she just looks really uncomfortable. Would I pick this up with my passive perception? Uh, yes, with your passive perception, you all notice this. She is not hiding it. Okay. I, uh, I motion over to Tover. Perhaps, um, dear fellow, you could entertain me with some tales of the, uh, the elven lands. So we take a bit of a stroll. You do see I'm on crutches, yes? <laughs> I look over and think, oh, that is uh, That's wild somewhat magic. uncomforting. Very, very exciting. Hope it's over now. But uh, yes. I mean, could... Would you happen to know an expert tailor in town? I mean, this cloak is clothing, but perhaps we could go there. He doesn't look like he's wearing much. It looks like uh, he is utilizing this large cloak to cover m much of his body. Ah, uh, yes, I see you're in a bit of a uh, predicament. We can always, like, swing by the uh, the person in town that happens to work with cloth a fair amount. Sure, I'll leave you there. Phenomenal. I much I, appreciate I, it. I give, like, a subtle, like, smile and a courteous, like, uh, not really noticeable, but like a, a shallow bow to uh, to Sarah as I leave, and You're I just to bow then, like I'll I'll see you guys later. She uncomfortably kind of like nods at you as well, and uh, kind of oh, gives you like no this reassuring thank you. Oh, dear lady, no need at all. It's fine, really. You have a lovely day. <laughs> That's funny oh, that you you think that she's bowing towards you, but she's doing that towards Varys, uh, and it and it's noticeably she makes eye contact with Varys, uh, kind of in like a thank you very much for for that type of thing. Buzz turns to Varys um, and mouths the word thank you, and puts her hand out towards you, Var uh, Varys. Oh, 
I will return a gesture. I will like take her hand then. When you take her hand, um, and your hands let go, you feel in your hand that there's something there. Oh, okay. I will. And as you I... turn around and you and Tover walk away, you see in your hand a necklace. Um, it looks like little daisy chains of flowers in a daisy chain necklace. Um, this is going to be from Aurora Marie. So Aurora Marie, thank you so much. Um, oh, this ew. is for this is for you. It's a magical item. So sorry, Aurora. It took a little while to get it. I, I was like, I have a plan. Um, but yeah, it is a little necklace, daisy chain necklace. Cool. Oh, she gave you some flowers. Ah, oh, she must know you really well then. So appropriate is a gift. Yes. How kind. I have like mental flashbacks right now of plants trying to kill me, but like the gesture and all that is really appreciated. Like, yeah. I can hide the horror now. <laughs> I've seen things that people wouldn't believe. Um, the plant is not on the ground. It's not attached. It's dead already. So you're not that concerned about it. Um, Good. But it's it, an example to its friends. <laughs> it does. It does give you a bit of an uncomfortable like nauseous feeling looking at it like you're you're still pretty afraid of whatever it is even though you're like fighting i guess give me like um i guess it would be like a wisdom uh, or con constitution save you need to roll because it's, it's gonna be a natural 20 again <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that that allows you to to kind of power through your fear of plants. Good. But but you do have a still feeling in the back of your head that it might try to kill you, so you might not want to wear it because it might choke you to death. Yeah. So thank you. For, 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 I will still respect my enemy. I will yeah. not let my guard down. Um. So tell me whenever you'd like to look at the item, but you do have a magic item. Um. Okay. Tover and uh, Varys kind of head out of the inn, and we zoom back in inside of the inn as the woman uncomfortably sits there, and Baz and Uthal are sitting at the table with her still. Uthal weirdly regains all of his uh, stuff. <laughs> Yeah, as uh, basically as Tover walks away from the table and leaves, and as soon as the door is shut, you kind of have this... <sighs> You kind of like get yourself back together, you know? Like there was a moment yeah. where you just were kind of like losing it. You were almost as uncomfortable as the woman sitting in the chair next to Pat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he's going to ask, uh, perhaps we should start at the beginning. Sorry for interrupting. I am Uthal. Uh, I'm, I'm Sarah. S S Sarah Sandy. Who's all my Aston? Good to meet you. It's good to meet you too. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I'm nervous. That is fine. Uh, we are all nervous at one point or another. Uh, mine is a fear. I, I don't want to die. Perhaps we can... We can protect you. Uh, what is it that gives you this fear of death? She kind of like, again, she has that thing where she's like, keeps like, looking down and like, it looks like she's looking over her shoulder, but she's not. Like I said, I fear that if I tell you what happened, I might not live any longer. Do you think so? What'd you say, Bez? Why do you think so? The old... The old hag in the woods. She, she, she saw me. She saw my face. And she looks horrified as she's looking at you. 
Baz. Like, she looks like she's seen a ghost. Where did you see this old hag? The forest to the south. We were just trying to find our child. Is that in the direction that the, uh, which where we left Gaz was? Um, not, no. Gaz is in the, um, he's to the east. You went north, uh, northwest, sorry. Um, hmm. he's northwest of town. Um, she's talking about to the south, which the south of town oh. is where yeah. all the badness is. Right. That we've been ignoring. Yeah. Dragons. Witches and other things. Apparently fiends. And Aberrations, and... celestials, undead. Uh, I have a whole list for you. <laughs> <laughs> Ardoth does as well. And do you believe that she may be after you now? Have you ever felt like someone was watching you? Yes. I feel like she's watching me right now. Rose looks over to the woman in the cloak. She's not there anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh. Hey. Was she still there when I was leaving? She was. You walked past her. Okay. I think Uthal needs to be more perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's everyone's passive perception? 14. 10. Ferris? 16 here. But what I was it? Left. 16. But 16. I yeah. 13, but I left with him. Tover's what? 13. 13, yeah. None of you saw. I mean, you saw her there when you left. But, uh, Baz and Uthal, you've been too caught up in listening to this woman talk that yeah. by the time you look over, she's not there anymore. Um, Uthal will, uh, Uthal says, um, Whatever it is, I'm sure I'm sure that me and Baz and the others of our group can remove this evil that haunts you. You promise. You promise you'll protect me. She looks like she's pleading. Like, for her life. And uh, a tear trembles down her eyes as down her one eye as she like she looks like she's holding it back but she blinks and uh, a teardrop falls down and then she quickly wipes it away and she's super awkward as she has been the entire time <laughs> I, I promise Richard Richard said we had to find Timothy so so we we packed up everything I mean, we went to the south I, I know we're not supposed to go there and I, I know there's a curfew but it's our son we had to you have to understand no one else was helping she looks over at the message board where there's just a ton of children. Paintings. Buzz looks at Uthal, like eye contact, giving him the look like, uh oh, we screwed up, didn't we? Uthal will kind of give him the eye, con eye contact back and be like, yeah. <clears throat> your husband Richard um, did he get lost he's dead I, th I, th I think he's I think he's dead I think he's dead and she just starts crying 
uncontrollable tears as she says that. It's almost like that's the first time she said it out loud to someone. Unsure what to do, Boz just like puts his hand on her shoulder. <laughs> yeah, Boz is not charismatic at all. He's like, uh. uh is gonna comfort her um, as best as he can. Yeah, you actually get up from your seat because you're across from her and you you move next to her and you try to comfort her. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he is fine. Did you see him? Um, perhaps he just got lost. We can find him along with your son. She starts shaking her head furiously. I don't, I don't think you'll find him. They, they were tearing away at his body. I don't, I don't think he's alive anymore. What did it? Oh, did you ask a? Yeah, you, uh, I, I asked what uh, what did it. I don't know it. It was like it was human, but she looks at you. But it was it was dead, like a body came out of the ground, and there were so many of them. I just I I couldn't. I I I ran. I. I think I could have helped him. I, I tried. I promise I tried. I, I used the axe. And I cut its arm off, but there were just so many of them. I had to, I had to run. You have to understand. And she like grabs your like, grabs your cloak, and she's like holding you close as she says this. Uh. Yeah, Baz is. Uh, he. I'm sure he would have wanted you to have made it out safe. He would be happy that you survived. I'm a coward. I'm a coward. And she just starts crying. And uh, she's trying to like wipe her tears away as she's crying. You are not a coward. You live for your son. We shall find him. The old lady watched. She just watched this happen. Old lady. Yeah, they call her the old hag. She comes into town sometimes, but... Never in the inn. She never comes to the inn. She... She just watched. She watched. Do you know where she goes? I've, 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 I've only seen her in the forest, and... Uh, I've only heard other people say she she's coming to town, but... I never saw her before. I just... Just then, she just watched. She was smiling. She just watched and she smiled. And I ran. I, I don't know what... I don't know who could watch that. She, like, looks at the table as if she's, like, re-envisioning something horrifying. <laughs> Deucer, maybe she hates you because you keep calling her old hag. <laughs> I mean, that probably doesn't help. He's got a point. I think Buzz looks to Uthal. Not entirely sure what to do with this uh, woman breaking down in front of him. Yeah. Um. I think this is the first time you guys have, like, interacted with someone who was so desperate. I mean, the shoe polishes were much more refined uh, when you talked to them and they were calm about the situation. Although it was a solemn, sad f feeling. It was not the same as this. she's desperate. Uthal is just going to continue comforting her best as he can 
Yeah, you yeah. guys have already kind of agreed that you'll, yeah. you'll help her. Is there any other information you're trying to gather from her? Or at this point, are you just like, we know what we need to do and you're, you have enough information? Um, I'm going to ask her one more question. Uh, okay. How far into the forest did you go before you uh, ran into them? Uh, I don't I felt like I was running for days. Um, uh, she like kind of stumbles and makes a lot of noises and sounds like she's like trying to remember. And you can tell that she's trying to remember. Uh, tears come down her eyes and she wipes them away. And um, uncomfortably, she like uses her cloak to like wipe off snot that's coming out of her nose. And you just see her, she's just like trying to compose herself. I think. Three days. We, we, we traveled f f three days, I, re I remember, and there was a a tree. It, it was almost like it had arms. Uh, it, it, had ar it moved. The tree, it moved. I, I remember it moved. And, and that's when they came. They, they came out of the ground, and they... And she, like, looks like she can't handle it anymore, and she starts crying again. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I think Boz waits a little bit for her to uh, regain her composure. You know, gives her like backpats something. He doesn't. <laughs> I like how <laughs> Javaltus is like. I'm enjoying this so much. I'm yelling my own questions at the monitors. <laughs> <laughs> They've been ignoring the entire main plot for ele like 11 episodes. <laughs> the dragons and T-Rexes. Enough to get to level eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just power leveling right now and yeah. then we'll get to the main story. Line. Yeah, totally. That makes sense. Digressing and side questing. Um, but it affects the world. The world still keeps going on. So Uthal's actually, he's going to use prestidigitation to kind of some this woman says she's been running for several days her cloak's probably really dirty and from where she's been wiping her like nose and stuff with it mm -hmm. he's gonna use prestidigitation to kind of clean her up a little bit just so yeah she kind of like looks down and then looks at you and as um, as he's casting this because i've got a question about the cloak does it have a hood her cloak yeah no, the cloak, the new cloak that I got. Yeah, it has a hood. Okay. He'll, he'll throw the that hood up before casting it then. Okay. Yep. Okay, and, uh, you get a bonus, right? No, it's actually to hide um, some blue flames that wreath his head every time he casts. Oh, that's right, right. I forgot about that. So I don't know if Boz would notice, but he might. All right. Um... I'm going to have Baz, aka Stan, roll us a 1d4. Alright. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. Continue. Yeah, uh, once she. Thank you, Angel. <laughs> once she composed herself a little more, um, he asked her. Uh, who has been saying that they have seen her in town? I don't know. I, I don't remember. It's whispered thought. People, people, they talk, you know? You hear things. It's a start. You said she never comes into the inn, yes? I, I haven't I, I haven't seen her here and I don't think anyone else has. Uh crap. She just grabs uh one of the the cups or mugs of ale that's at the table. <laughs> Doesn't even know whose it is, she just grabs it and starts like chugging it. Probably Boz since he was sitting next to her. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> It could have been mine, since mine is still standing there, because I left. Yeah, he was sitting next to her before. True. 
Uh, I would need a little bit, but if you wish, you can stay in the room that I have tonight. I can stay elsewhere. <laughs> so that is- With all the human ears. <laughs> why, that's why I need a bit. <laughs> <laughs> just so people who people who are just tuning in, Uthal every morning or every time he wakes up wakes up with eight or one d eight severed ears on his chest, and he's been Closer keeping them. Inside. He's been keeping them in a bucket under his bed. <laughs> As you do, you know. 